Hello. Today I'm going to show you the latest feature in Cast Effect. I'm using Cast Effect 1.4.0, which it just came out today. In this update, we got a new tool for blocking. So blocking is something that you do when you run a long running action or something that's basically uh, that crosses machine boundaries. You block the current thread so that it cannot be used for anything else until that action is done and the thread isn't even uh, like spinning your CPU cycles. It's just uh, out there waiting. Because of that and because these actions typically take long to execute, longer than, than seconds, for example, uh, we run them on a separate thread pool which is usually represented in Scala as an execution context. One of very, very commonly seen blocking actions that you might see in your Scala code is using JDBC. JDBC is a Java, uh, Java standard for, for communicating to SQL databases. So here I have a mock implementation of a JDBC client, but it might as well be something like Doobie or another library in the Scala ecosystem. And my implementation uh, requires a blocking execution context. So this is the execution context that all the blocking actions of my, of my implementation will run on. In this case, I don't really do any blocking because I just, just print a message, but in real life, this might take minutes, seconds, uh, a lot of time. So let's hide it again. Uh, and because I know that my JDBC implementation will be backed by a, an execution context that needs a thread pool somewhere, I will need to shut down that thread pool. So my JDBC implementation will depend on that, on a thread pool that needs to be acquired and cleaned up as part of a resource. I encourage you to read or, or see videos about resource uh, afterwards. So how we typically do this and, or did this before um, this newest I update, uh, we would define a resource for an execution context. So something like this. And then when I have this resource, when I have this resource, I can map on it to build a resource with JDBC. So I will do just that. And now I'll, I'll use jdbc.mock. And here we go. But now I still need to implement this resource for execution context. So one of the ways that you could do this is use resource make. Now in the acquire section, we would do execution context from executor service and use a and use a cached thread pool. So that when uh, it will be an unbounded thread pool that will reuse the threads that it builds. So one, once I have that, I can close my execution context. And then I can map uh, from executor context, execution context, executor service to execution context. Uh, and this is just widening, so I can use widen. I need to do this because uh, resource isn't covariant in the type of the resource. So now I have both. I have the resource for the execution context and I have the resource for my GDBC. And I can run it. Uh, I can run my, my code to, uh, to use this, this resource. So when I, when I run this, you will see that it worked. But now, after the update, we don't really need to do all that. What I can do is use a new type that just 
came up in Cassie Fact. For now, I will just stub out the implementation. We will fill it out later. And now, I'll instead of having an execution context, I will use a blocker. And because now it's a blocker uh, resource, uh, this is not a blocking execution context anymore. This is a blocker. But blocker provides a method called blocking context, which returns an execution context. So let's give it a quick look. Blocker is a new type over execution context. It provides some methods, but we are not interested in these at this moment. What matters is that a blocker is not the same type as execution context. Which is important because execution context is very, a very, very, uh, not a very specific type. We can use it for anything, for CPU bound operations, for uh, event passing operations, and for blocking actions. But we don't want to use the same one for all of these. So that's the reason we have blocker. So I'm passing the execution context still, just like I did, I did before. But this is only because JDBC, the implementation here, isn't aware of what the blocker is. So this might be a library that was released for Cat's Effect before 1.4, or, or your own code that was written with, uh, without blocker in mind. But the change to blocker is very easy. You can just, just change your execution context to blocker and use blocking context. Or you can use blocking context, uh, sorry, blocker, block on. And this will work. You still need an, uh, a context shift in scope, but you no longer have to use it by hand. So given that, let's get back to our main, uh, main class, blocker demo. Now I still don't have the blocker resource and now I need to update my, my call site. So it turns out that blocker on the JVM has a very nice builder called blocker apply, which returns an, a resource with a blocker inside. And this only works because, uh, well, it's, it's the JVM. So now I don't really need this file. I can just use blocker io.map and use my blocking actions as I did before. So thank you for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, you can check out the code on GitHub. There's not really much of it, uh, but if you want to uh, have a look. Thanks.